Be sure to click on the link in the description to find all of these blueprints. You can either go directly to the downloadable PDF files, or you can go to the video which explains how to print these out to a one-to-one -one scale. Alright, so I trimmed down this cylinder right here. It used to be a little bit taller than this circle. It used to come up to somewhere around there, so I just trimmed it, so now it's flush with that small circle right there. As you can see, this gear right here, the top of the screw that the screwdriver would unscrew was originally up here, and I basically cut the top of that off, and I'm going to be filing this down a little bit. Right now it's just super glue and baking soda around it, and you can see the threads are on this side of the gear. So this is able to go inside of this cylinder, it just threads in there from the threads we made earlier, just like that, and it would go down and eventually touch the small circle under there. And obviously this goes through here, just like this, and this goes inside through the top, just like that. So if you want your screws to be flush, and you are using the same type of screw as I am, you may have to take your knife and cut at a slight angle in this hole so you will have room for this to go inside and be flush on the top. As you can see that one is flush, but if I move it over here it sort of comes above the surface of this. So all you need to do, like I said, is angle your knife and start cutting around it, just like this, and you match the screw. Obviously, if you're using the same type of screw, you would do that on all of these holes, and you don't have to do it on the top cover for these four holes, but you do need to do it for these back holes here. So I went ahead and drilled these three holes here in the front, and they go all the way through the top cover and the main frame. So if you drill the first hole, it's really easy. All you need to do is find the center on the blueprint and drill through it with the smallest drill and increase the size to a 1 8 inch drill. Now if you're drilling the second, third, or fourth hole, you want to make sure these holes are lined up. So first of all, just do what you would normally. And if it's you know not on your blueprint anymore, you can take a circle template or just some calipers and measure up halfway on these small areas for the screw and just draw the 1 8 inch hole. You can see it's faintly drawn on there and then just take a thumbtack or something like that and just find the center of it and just push down slightly like that. And then you take your smallest drill and start going through it. After it goes through all the way like that as you can see, make sure everything is vertical and straight, and then you can move on to the next size, which is just the second size on here. After it goes all the way through, you just keep increasing the size until you get to a 1 8 inch drill. Now you want to line these up, so just push the drill down just like that, so you know this one is lined up. And you can do that to all of them if you want but that's how you drill this last hole. So basically you just continue this all the way up until you go through there. And these last two holes here are very simple to drill because you don't have to go all the way through this super thick part. All you need to do is just find the middle just like before and just go straight up. Just make sure everything's centered. So just keep doing this, unless you have a power drill. If you feel comfortable using a power drill on paper, which tends to be a little risky, especially when it's such a small piece like this, then you can go ahead and do it, but I just prefer to do it by hand. It really doesn't take very long. Well, it doesn't take long if you keep doing it. All right, there it is, one-eighth of an inch, going all the way through this, and also through the top cover. So that's what it looks like. So a screw can still go down there, but it might need to be trimmed just a little bit shorter. Alright, so all of the holes that are necessary to drill are drilled. So now we can actually start to polish this hidden blade a little bit. 
So I'm going to start off polishing the bottom of this because it has the biggest surface. And then I'm going to end up polishing the sides too, which you use the exact same technique for flat pieces like this and stacked up pieces because essentially it's the same thing. Now obviously polishing paper can be one of the most time consuming parts of paper crafting but it's well worth it. Usually the first thing I do is check the surface that I'm going to be polishing and then I take some super glue, in this case it's just Gorilla Glue. Make sure it is actually super glue, not some other type of gel stuff. And you basically put an initial layer of super glue over this. And usually after some super glue is on there like that, I take a scrap piece of 16 layer paper or something else flat that you can easily spread this around with. So make sure you just do this on the entire surface and it does take quite a bit of super glue to polish paper, but it's well worth it, like I said before. After coating the whole thing in super glue, you want to look really closely at everything to see where all of the low spots are. Next, you want to find some sort of bright light source. You can use a lamp or a window or something like that, just make sure you don't like look at the sun or something. You will definitely be able to see all of the low spots and all of the places that you need to fill with super glue and baking soda. So firstly, take something like a sanding sponge or just sandpaper and go over it just a little bit. The first low spot I see is right here, so I'm going to grab my baking soda here and apply some super glue on that low spot, just like that, and then take the baking soda and sprinkle it over it just like that and it usually hardens almost instantly. So you won't have to worry really about getting it on your finger. So just find all of the low spots that you can to begin with and fill them all up with super glue and baking soda, just like that. You don't have to get them all in the first time. Next, since that spot that you filled up is probably going to be higher up than the actual surface, you want to go over it with a file or some sandpaper like this. I usually use needle files because it seems to work well. After smoothing out one area like that, you may realize you need to do it a little bit more outside of that area because the spot that you just filed is now perfectly level. So you can see there, there are now some high spots because they are filled up with super glue and baking soda. So just do the same thing, go over it with a file or some sandpaper until it all becomes level. You may notice as you progress, you will have filled in all of the large low spots and then you'll be left with little ones like this. So all you need to do is put just a little bit of super glue there in those small low spots and sprinkle some baking soda, the exact same thing. And you just do that to all of the small low spots and eventually you will have a completely flat surface. So just keep doing this, the low spots will get smaller and smaller and pretty soon it will be completely filled. As you can see, just this back part right here is completely level and it stops about right there. So basically you just need to continue doing that on the entire surface. I'm going to finish leveling out the bottom of this surface right here and then I'm going to show you how to actually get it really shiny and polished. So now this is completely level and that took forever because I basically had to use files and you know the super glue and baking soda. Then I needed to use the sanding sponge as you can tell 
and then I used some 400 grit sandpaper. As you can see at this stage it's only level and I only really went to here on both sides. I didn't really go out to these edges yet because these still need to be finished off, you know, a little bit inside and everything to make them complete. So now I just folded this tissue and basically, since there's probably going to be a lot of super glue and baking soda, mostly just baking soda, you know, just the powder, you can basically clean it off using a tissue or something like that. So using a folded over tissue like that, it actually does shine it up quite a bit, but I like it just a little bit more shiny than this. So I recommend using a polish wheel or something like that. And I actually have a bigger one somewhere, but I don't know where it is at the moment. So I'll just make this work. So after using the polish wheel, as you can see, it's pretty shiny and it will accept paint very well if you ever decide to paint it and it will actually look like a high quality finish so everything still works perfectly fine as you can see I actually polished this entire piece and almost finished polishing the top cover I'm actually going to save that for the next video just because it takes so long so be sure to check out the next video it will be finishing this entire thing up and will make it look really nice.